Sup YouTube, it's your boy, Sly88 Fry here. So anyways, I am uploading a new React video. I actually got two React videos I'm gonna do today and I gotta get them done very quickly. Unfortunately, when I downloaded the other one, um, the audio was not saved, so that sucks because I definitely need the audio to react to that one, not just you know, muted talking. <laughs> oh, by the way, this shirt, um, atheist symbol. Just to get into, just to uh, briefly go over, I used to. Ha uh, you probably, you may have seen me wear this necklace in previous React videos. It's an atheist necklace. I got this atheist uh, ring. Um, unfortunately, this necklace, the rope tie that went with it, it broke, and the piece that like put it together broke off, and I was kind of sad about that. But uh, over our anniversary, my wife and uh, my wife actually got me this shirt, so I could still, you know, show off my pride and my beliefs. Nothing wrong with that, obviously. There's always people going around wearing their Christian crosses. It's only fair I actually show off my pride and my belief that there isn't a God and isn't a devil and isn't a heaven and isn't a hell. So, anyways, let's continue on to this video. By the way, my wife is actually Catholic, but she likes them an atheist, actually. She prefers it. She had dated a Catholic before who was born because they'd keep quoting the Bible every day. If that's all you can quote, that means they actually have nothing to say. My wife's a Catholic and she has a lot to say. So, obviously, she's a lot more fun than whoever that person than that person was. <laughs> and I'm more fun than that person. Otherwise, I don't know if my wife would want to be with me. <laughs> Anyways, let's continue to ABGN. Unfortunately, I gotta re-download the uh, Jonathan Pye one. Or maybe just watch it on YouTube uh, when I get an internet connection, but anyways, when I download it, for some reason there's no audio, I didn't notice that, but I guess I'll have to make sure to double check that from now on every time I download a video, just to be completely certain there's not a problem. I'm actually going to check again one more time. There was no audio on it. Yeah, see? No audio. So, let's react to AVGN. Thanks for watching this episode of Angry Video Game Nerd. And part. if you like hearing me talk, talk, talk all the time, well then check out the Cinemasker podcast every Tuesday. I'm sure it it'll be feels fun. really great being back in the studio, filming with Justin and Kieran in person finally. It's pretty cool having a weekly show where we can just hang out, talk about what's going on in our lives, and give the fans Zero a little insight into no how we do things. It's something I've been looking forward to for a long time, so I hope Same you're enjoying it. Now people usually know me as the AVGN, but today I'm the AVPN. <laughs> um, All right, well, I don't care about the ExpressVPN ad. I just thought it would be cool to at least view when he's advertising another show, another series of his. I'm going to just go over this real quick, though. A lot of people like to complain about uh, Screenwave Media just basically taking over Cinemassacre as a whole, and I think that's partially true. But there was a video that recently came out that if those who are skeptics of of, na of AVGN now and Cinemassacre in general now, you have to see it. James Rolfe sets the record straight in this video. You have to see it. No reason for me to do react to it. Just go to the Cinemassacre YouTube channel and um, you should find it. It, it. He uploaded it a couple weeks ago, so it should be pretty easy to find. Um... And he explains in detail that, yes, he needs that help. He can't do all the work himself. He has a family to raise and uh, all these plans and ideas. But he, he even explained that if he didn't have the help from Screenwave Media, there'd probably be only three AVGN episodes a year. So he makes a very valid point. That's actually something I sadly kind of went through with my own YouTube channels. Um, because I've, I never actually have any help with my channels. I always have to do everything myself. Um, there were videos I used to work really hard on on my secondary channels, like comedy videos, which you can find in my compilation of comedy videos. Go check that out when you get a chance. Uh, I decided to put that entire compilation into, uh, all together into one video on this channel. Uh, it's about an hour 47 long, so it's about the length of a movie, so... 
plenty worth plenty of worth the time to watch, especially since it's small videos making a, a larger one, so you don't have to do it in one sitting. Um, but anyways, on all these videos, the help I got was that my then friends and I we would be in scenes together they would we would shoot scenes together we'd sometimes they'd sometimes give me suggestions on direct on directorial routes and stuff but all the uh behind the scenes and editing me all of it was me and yeah it made it so i these videos that were pretty mostly pretty s simple videos although i like to say professionally done um although not paid for it um Unlike this video that I'm monetizing for sure, but I gotta point out, it was just kind of, I, I, I wish that I had extra help making the videos. Like, um, I, I uh, have more responsibilities now. I work longer hours with my job now, and I have my wife to spend time with, and someday we may or may not ha even have a, we may have a kid, who knows, I'm not sure. Um, but the fact is, I, I really enjoy making these videos and I want to keep making them but if I could have extra help making them so that I'm not having to do everything by myself and not having to actually always do react well I mean I enjoy making the react videos but I'd like to have some more original stuff too which is kind of harder to do because there's a lot more editing and a lot more um, work to be done on that that'd be awesome but so I, I understand what James was saying about that he needs that extra help because he has so much to do. Anyways, sorry I rambled on. Let's continue with the video. It's getting hot in here. You ever have to take a shit so bad you twisted your ankle? <laughs> I suppose I should explain that. It's when you're holding in for so long, the shit's pressing against your sacrum and to counteract it, you push your hips out, turning your leg in this <laughs> awkward position. It feels like getting fisted in the ass, except you're getting fisted out the ass. And it's a fistful of shit, but there's no fist. That's what this <laughs> game reminds me of. So to hell with it, watch it go. All right, I guess this is not a. I guess the review's over. Okay, no game. Oh, damn. The review didn't even begin, and I already broke the game. <laughs> no Oops. review, okay. I guess I can't play it then. What a genius idea. I should have been doing that all along. Well, we have some extra time now. I don't know. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> How about my shirt? That sounds real interesting, doesn't it? No. I started wearing it in 2020. That seemed like a good time for a fresh shirt for a new That's decade, a new generation. Like how they always shirt. update the Star Trek uniforms. But some say I should go back to the old shirt. Nah. Okay, no problem. All right. There we you still go. have it? That's amazing. Some, some buttons here. It's a little baggy. Uh -huh. uh, it's got some blood stains and shit stains on it. So it is old. And you know what? I'm also wearing my old underwear right now, too. I'm just playing around. But I do agree, this old shirt is very comfy, and when you wear something for a long time, it becomes part of you. Oh, yes. You know what? I'm Garth. also going to try my old glasses. Wayne's World. Garth. Yeah. Oh. I can't see shit. <laughs> huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was weird. Ah, it's that magic leprechaun that always puts my games back together. Well, oh, that guess I'm not getting out of this one. <laughs> okay, that explains that. <laughs> no wonder why uh, at the end of the Nintendo World Championships episode, when uh, the fucking nerd decided to break both the silver and gold cartridge of any of the... Uh, NES Championship or whatever it was called, you know, Nintendo World Championship 1990, and Pat the NES Punk was pissed. It's no wonder why at the end of the episode you saw Pat and the nerd holding uh, a gold and a gray cartridge after all. They, he, the nerd did destroy the real cartridges, but that leprechaun, he, he, he fixed them. And Pat no longer had to uh, kill off the nerd because, hey... If the leprechaun didn't fix those cartridges, would we still have the nerd today? Pat would have killed him. He was ready to just murder him for destroying those cartridges. The Rocketeer for NES was based on the 1991 film about the biggest jetpacking flyer since Boba Fett. It was based okay. on the 1982 comic, which was a throwback to 1930s comics and film serials. 
As a kid, I loved the movie. And as an adult, I now appreciate how it celebrates old time heroes and golden age Hollywood. That's cool. It's a little bit like Indiana Jones and a little bit like the Michael Keaton Batman. You know, okay. the one where Batman wears a new suit. But I think they should have wore the old Adam West suit. Oh, come on. I'm just kidding. The Rocketeer's true identity is stunt pilot, goofy but endearing Cliff Seckard, who, after a thwarted attempt by mobsters, stumbles upon a prototype sure jetpack created by Howard Hughes. Wait a minute. What's this odd looking contraption? Hmm. This right here Looks like is a, nuke. a pink jetpack. Really? So he uses it for heroic <laughs> deeds, but must keep it out of the hands of the Nazis who want to use it as a weapon. The film okay. ambitiously tried to be the next big superhero franchise, but fell short like Socket the Duck after Sonic the Hedgehog. Wh but that's <laughs> Socket the Duck? What? Hey, is that a real game? Because there are times where he actually trolls us with something fake, like Dr. Claw's dump and pump on his... Um Kid Cool episode, which Kid Cool is a really great episode. I don't think it's the best episode of AVGN, but if you want, if you're like in a, a sad or angry mood and you need to, but you need to get on task, on point, and you just can't focus, the Kid Cool episode is perfect because it's less than ten minutes long and it's just absolutely hilarious. And he mentions the Doctor Claw Dump and Pump at the end, which is a fake game, doesn't even exist. <laughs> Didn't stop it from landing on the NES. He's got to be kidding. <laughs> the only thing faithful to the movie are the colorful and appealing cutscenes. But once you get into the gameplay, it's a clusterfuck of infuriating mazes and backgrounds that look like throw up. There's something about the overall look, the graphics, and the text, especially during the cutscenes, that in some way reminds me of another game I've reviewed Dick Tracy which had good intentions, but was butchered by poor decisions. Yes. And not at all coincidentally, both these games were published by same, Bandai. Same well, company. they also published that other one, but let's not get Ooh, into yeah, that. Yeah. It's a basic self-explanatory game, game, made yes. up of six side-scrolling stages where you walk around dodging bullets and punching people in the dick in awkward crouching positions. You <laughs> collect weapons, and ammo is maxed at 99, which you can cycle through and use whenever necessary. The graphics look a lot like the Dick Tracy game as well. And I think both games came out roughly around the same time. I feel like the Dick Tracy one probably came out a little bit after, because I think the movie came out around the same time as this game, but, you know. Terry. So, nothing terribly unusual until you get to these long jumps. If you miss the platform, you fall back to the area you were just at. So you have to Woo! retread your path over and over until you get it right. Go back up! Get over there! Fuck! Get over there! Mm! Ah, they give you just barely enough distance for it to even be possible. Who likes having to be at the tippy toe edge? Why do so many games force you to do that? Don't you just want to? <laughs> it also really That'd bugs me awesome. that all throughout the game, there's tons of open doors, but you can't go inside any of them. At least they're consistent. So you learn pretty quickly not to try going in them, but it yeah. just begs the question. Why do they have to be there? And what's supposed to be on the other side? A bathroom? A closet? People banging in an alley? <laughs> and they really ran out of ideas for enemies. Miniature tanks? That's really? Random. Are they remote control toys? Did they run astray from a Godzilla movie set? What are the standards here? Maybe they ran astray from uh, James Bond. Anybody remember um, back when I was a teenager in the early mid 2000s uh i i actually played golden eye not golden eye 007 nightfire on the gamecube now of course you know the the fond memories are when i are in my childhood playing golden eye on the n64 and i actually liked its spiritual successor perfect dark even more but uh my friends my then friends and i had a blast playing nightfire on the gamecube which was also available on ps2 original xbox i don't think there was a pc version but anyway um <clears throat> lots of fun and but what, what we really loved is that we could actually you know have remote control tanks on the battlefield or especially like these remote controls mini tanks on the battlefield that shoot like real explosive shots you know or the remote control uh helicopters that you could actually fly around and launch missiles at enemies it's it's so awesome. It's just so much fun. You don't really get to use those kind of things as much in current games. I mean, yeah, you know, the Call of Duty games, you now have those remote control explosive RC cars or whatever. But, I mean, 
Nightfire, you had remote control miniature tanks on the ground that shoot actual cannon shots and remote control miniature helicopters that fly around and you shoot missiles. Like that was, that was a lot of fun. But uh, let's continue. I've been rambling on. The enemies are throwing more advanced tech at me than the actual jetpack. Like uh, this shit. It's like a dildo had a baby with a transformer. What the fuck? And guess what else? Really, take a wild guess. Bats. Bats. Uh, of course. It's easy to get numb to it, but stop and actually think about it. Somebody, somewhere in the world, thought, hey, you know what the Rocketeer game needs? Bats. I'm starting and to think Top Gun actually had bats and I missed it. <laughs> the funny part funny, is so. when you punch the bats, they explode. If, if a bat was flying that high on Top Gun, it's probably Dracula from uh, Hotel Transylvania. Oh, in what seems like a splash of blood. Long before the Mortal Kombat censorship, the Rocketeer was fucking shit up. No, this game does not need blah, bats. Blah, blah, blah. I'll tell you what it needs. The rocket jetpack. Where is it? Where's what? <laughs> the rocket. You do get the <laughs> rocket, but in order to use it, you have to collect gas. Okay, well that's oh, look, there is there's the gas. There's the gas. Oh, I'm dead. Uh game over? One life? No continues! Oh, you get a code? Unlimited continues? Okay, my bad. I got a little too bent out of shape there. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, you reacted a little too soon, like when he destroyed the game before the review. I don't remember who it was. I saw this years ago. Uh, somebody commented on one of the classic AVGN episodes from like a decade, from over a decade ago. Um saying i can't wait to hear how he responds when he die when, when he dies like and says no continues like you know like if somehow in real life he dies and he can actually still shout no continues in death like <laughs> i don't know anyways I, I just thought about that one all of a sudden so there i am almost about to get the rocket yeah yeah Fuck! that took just that one shot huh well, I flew for a couple seconds. <laughs> so finally, yeah. I start flying. But the thing is, you have to keep that gas meter from running out. So you I only bet. want to use the rocket sparingly. Yeah. So while the rocket was included, it's not as prominent as you've hoped. Yeah, it's like um, there's a Super Nintendo game I grew up playing in the 90s. Um, I wish I'd get my hands on that game again, actually. I, I actually sold my Super Nintendo, which I regret doing i wish i never did that i played that system more than any system i ever played growing up even more than the n64 but anyway um daffy duck the marvin missions was a game where you played as the daffy duck character duck dodgers and there was a jetpack in that game but in order to use it you had to have jetpack fuel and but uh I know a lot of people looking back at, at that game are going to say it's not very good because you have to keep using your shield all the time and uh, you got to have the right weapons and stuff. But I enjoyed it growing up and I liked the jetpack. It was cool. Um, and I thought the game was a lot of fun. The bosses were interesting. Um, I wish it was. A, I wish you could save on that game, but to be fair, the game is not particularly long. It's just at first it's kind of a really hard game to beat. Once you're used to it, you'll memor you'll you'll memorize where things are and you'll you know have no problem. Um, but you got to be smart with your ammunition because each weapon besides the default one has limited ammo, um, and then the jetpack has limited fuel. So I, I don't know. I enjoyed that game a lot. Just the fact I saw him with the jetpack having to hold on to fuel and the nerd mentioning it made me think of the of that. Uh, Daffy Duck game, the Marvel missions on the Super Nintendo, because that game I actually had a lot of fun with, although it might not have aged the best. One of the biggest failures of any game is when it's not fun to fight the enemies. Ooh, to yeah. punch them, you have to get close, naturally, but if you get too close, the punch goes through them. Oh, I hate it. Uh, I punch them! Punch them! <laughs> <laughs> and it's real fair that the enemies can shoot through the walls, but you can't. Uh, Classic. Do they have some kind of special ghost bullets or something? They do. Oh, that's just piss. They have ghost bullets. Then there's these little red spaceship It's a things. ghost car. You have to go near them to trigger them. But they shoot shit, so you have to get away, and then they respawn. Oh, no. Oh, come on. Just duck. It what it boils down just, to just, is... Just duck. I'm serious. If he ducked, it, he wouldn't get hit by it. It goes above his head if he ducks. That's... 
The, you screwed up, nerd. Sorry, sorry. Right there, you screwed up. You, uh... I hope you weren't doing that thing that you used to do that you've even acknowledged in your demonstration video when you did the Barbie thing. Uh, the, the Barbie review. I hope you weren't intentionally messing up to, you know, add to the anger, because... You screwed up. The, the thing was going above his head. If you ducked, it would the explosion would have gone above his head. You, 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 I'm sorry. Right there, I'm going to get criticized that you screwed up that time. That This is a game where trying not to get hit is too frustrating. So a more okay, tolerable strategy is to just run through and hope you don't get hit too much. To hope you don't get beat up too much. So that if I get beat up tonight, you know. And rely on the confidence <laughs> that a heart will show up. Is that a fun mindset? No. No. It's not. Take a good game, for example, like Contra. Doing a fly. Somebody has got to make a video where um, we see all the references to Contra. Like, he makes. I mean, he hasn't done one in a long time, but all his classic episodes, he makes so many Contra references. He also does that with Castlevania, especially Simon's Quest. He makes so many references to Castlevania, so many references to Contra. Maybe I'll make it. I'll, I'll try to research which episodes he makes references to Contra and and and, and um, Castlevania. I just put it all together into one coherent video. Because <laughs> he makes so many references to those I'm two series. somersault through a bunch of bullets and successfully avoiding them feels rewarding and satisfying. Yeah. But not here. The boss fights are uninspired and flat out absurd. At the end of level five, you actually fight Griffith Observatory. Wow. What next do you fight Bronson Cave? The final boss is Sinclair, the main villain, played by James Bond, Timothy Dalton, oh, who honestly cool. carried the whole movie. Oh, but he looks sense. just like one of the generic enemies Aww. and he's stupidly easy. Then you that's get this half-ass ending with just one screen that says, I love you, Cliff, and that's it. In the movie, the climactic fight takes place on top of the Nazi blimp, and it's between Cliff and the henchman, whose look was actually based on actor Rondo Haddon, who appeared in Universal Sherlock Holmes and Monster series. Okay. How does this not seem like a stage for a video game? In short, The Rocketeer might be better than lots of the games I reviewed on the NES, but that's actually a sad thing to say. All these years, I'm coming to realize the NES has less games like Contra and more like The Rocketeer, and when you want to add up all the really bad ones, it's a pretty shitty library. You know what? I can't believe I'm saying this, but the NES sucked. On that note, let's... Well, to be fair, it seems with every pretty much everything in existence um we're always aware of what's in good quality more often because people will watch it or people will you know consume it that's what they're entertained by they, they're entertained by stuff that's good quality but the majority of a lot of things are of kind of bad quality let's be honest uh those who actually go to mcdonald's frequently do you go there because you actually think the food is, like, really good or top quality? I doubt it. You may actually enjoy the food, for all I know. I don't even go to McDonald's that much. I don't like the food there. I like the breakfast menu. I do like McFlurries, although I'm a little lactose intolerant, so I can't have them very often. But, um, obviously their french fries are good, although I think the fries at Wendy's are better. But... Look, McDonald's is the largest burger chain in the world and the uh, and the second largest restaurant in the world. Only Subway has more restaurants than McDonald's throughout the entire world, which is quite impressive. But can you really say honestly that you choose McDonald's because their food is better quality than, you know, where else you can go? Probably not, unless you're just talking about just the fries and maybe the breakfast menu. Um... I actually think McDonald's kind of sucks. It's not that good. It, the quality is not that good. Um, it's enough to make sure you'll actually want to eat there. But most people really go there because it's affordable. They have great value menu deals and stuff like that. It's not necessarily because of food quality. Believe me, I've had a Big Mac. I hated it. 
there's too much bread in there. In fact, there was a, I forget which competitor did this. Might have been Wendy's, might have been uh, Carl's Jr. I'm, I'm not sure, but somebody advertised like a big burger they had and said, oh, and the best part about it, there's no bread in the middle. Because that's the Big Mac. There's like too much lettuce, too much bread. It sucks, you know. All I, I remember when I had it, all I really tasted was the bread and the lettuce. And I, I didn't even like the burger patties that much. They didn't taste that good to me. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, I don't really like McDonald's to begin with. So, see, a lot of things that are popular aren't necessarily popular because they're good. And a lot of things, uh, when it comes to the competition, are just popular because it's cheap and stuff like that. Um, for example, like... The YouTube, right? The people you're aware of are people who have like a million subscribers, a hundred thousand subscribers, maybe fifty thousand subscribers, maybe even ten or twenty thousand subscribers. Um, I, for one, only have one point six thousand subscribers. That's just one point six k. That's all I have. One one thousand six hundred and thirty two or something. That's not much, especially after being around since 2008. My channel has gone through some transformations over the years, and actually, to be honest, I probably would have more subscribers, more views, been monetized a lot sooner if I didn't actually have secondary channels. I think starting those secondary channels really hurt my main channel, and it was not necessary to start them. But while I feel like my channel is like not popular, I mean, 1.6 thousand is not that much anyway, but I think I'm actually not in what the majority of YouTube channels are. The majority of YouTube channels have less than a thousand subscribers, but the fact is, since they have less than a thousand, we don't know what they are. So, in my example, like, a lot of times when it comes to pop, when it comes to certain media or whatever, or other industries, you're aware of what's popular. You're not aware, aware of what's not popular. So, to be honest, it might be a fair assessment to say that the NES, the majority of the games might have actually been really bad. It's just we're aware of the ones that are really good. Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 2 and 3, uh, Legend of Zelda. I'd say Zelda 2 should be included. I know people love the original Metroid. I think that game sucks because you can't figure out where the hell you're going in that game. Of course, I grew up playing Super Metroid, which is a huge improvement. I also thought Metroid 2 was a good improvement over the first game. But, um, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, the, we're aware of the games that are really good, but for one good game, there's probably at least 20 bad games that came out around the same time. And it's probably the case with a lot of systems back then, too. Even Super Nintendo, even though the game quality was definitely better overall. Move on over to the Super Nintendo. Yeah, the Rocketeer in 16-bit. This one has to be better. I mean, how could it not? Really, I'm not joking here. A more advanced console, learn from their mistakes. This one has to be better, I right? I hope it's not like Terminator 2 when right? they screwed up w worse. Are you trying to be Pilot Wings? That came out the year before as a launch title for the SNES. It's worse than the NES version. It might even be worse than Wizard of Oz or Hong Kong 97. This might be the worst fucking Super Nintendo game I ever played. It just started Maybe. and I can't even figure out what to do. This seems like a deliberate attempt to waste the player's time as much as possible. And not just waste your time, but to straight up insult you. You expected to get the Rocketeer, jetpack flying, hand-to-hand -hand yeah. combat, gunplay, action and adventure. But no, instead, you're immediately forced to go in an endless circle like a dog chasing a turd stuck to its anus. <laughs> I'm holding down the speed button, but I keep losing the race and bumping into the fucking towers. Of yeah. course, there's something I'm doing wrong and need to figure it out. 
The fact you go in a circle pisses me off to no end. They couldn't even design a horizontal side-scrolling stage? Why even yeah. include this in the game? As the first- And Pilot Wings had come out the year before. Could they have at least tried to make it be a- Instead of this perspective, you know, have it be behind the airplane and you turn? I mean, maybe they didn't have, you know, the um, upgraded cartridges that- you know, Super Mario Kart had, or F-Zero had, and of course later on the FX chip that uh, Star Fox and, you know, um, Stunt Racer FX had, but couldn't they have at least tried to have the perspective be behind the plane so you could actually tell what's where you are? Just level? And I know, this was a scene in the movie, but this is one instance where they followed the movie a little too much. Imagine if you were playing an Indiana Jones game, and right when you started up, you're in the classroom <laughs> teaching. That would have been great. I was literally thinking he was going to say that. I was like, classroom? I was just thinking, classroom? Classroom? So what is it you <laughs> actually have to do here? How do you catch up with the other planes? Well, honestly, I don't really know. But what eventually worked for me was instead of looking at the main screen, I'd look at that little screen at the bottom. Never mind the speed meter, that, that thing that looks the like the screen. transporter lever from Star Trek, that specifically the, the original screen. series. You know, the one where Captain Kirk wore the old uniform, not before they changed it. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that tiny screen is what you should be looking at. That's how you avoid the towers, and by sticking close screen. to them, you can keep yourself closer to the inner circle and outrun the other flyers. I think you could also use L or R to steer. I really don't know, and I don't care. So what kind of back-ass way is this to program a game? Imagine if you were playing Doom, but you have to stare at a tiny box while the main screen was just, I don't know, a picture of a demon on a toilet or something. <laughs> Even when you kind of- I was gonna say, like, maybe the main screen would be a top-down view of the game or something, but that demon on a toilet, that, that, that really came out of left field. That was hugely unexpected. You know what you're doing. It's not fun. It's just an endurance test. That's too bad. Oh, thank God I won the race. Can you- Hi, uh, let's see what's let's next. See, yeah. What? No! No! No again? way! Why? You have to do it all over again? Why? This is Superman 64 degree of bullshit. How Why hard was it to make a game where you're just the rocketeer flying around? I want to be the rocketeer! Not Cliff in a plane! I want to be the rocketeer! You... Okay, you are now, I guess, but... The game just mocked me. <laughs> yeah, so now I'm the rocketeer going in a circle with fucking planes. Uh, it, it's like as if the game actually said to me, you want to be the rocketeer? Well, now you're the rocketeer, asshole. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. much the same thing. Just a sprite swap. But between these races, you're abruptly thrown into a shooter game. Why? Whoa, what the hell? It's weird because it's not a POV. You're behind the Rocketeer, yet you're controlling his aim. It's one of those type that of games where you just sense. move the crosshair around to take out the enemies. Well, to, to be honest, by being behind the Rocketeer and actually seeing him on screen, that's I think that's kind of neat because in a lot of those first person arcade style shooters back then, um, the POV, your, your, your PO, the POV was your, was you seeing everything and you couldn't dodge, you know, everything they threw at you would hit you unless, uh, it was like one of those projectiles you can shoot with your gun or something. So I think that's kind of neat that they actually allow you to see the character so you can move them out of the way. That I think is kind of neat, but it does look like this is kind of poorly executed. For what seems like eternity. You can fly, but where to? The yeah. ceiling? The <laughs> third level, or should I say the third level that looks different, yeah. is a side-scrolling shooter. That's Finally! Kind of, there we go. This is the bare minimum of what we'd expect from a Rocketeer game. And that's the sad part. This is the best it has to offer. Mm, yeah, you can blow bad. up your health! Which really sucks, so you can't be too trigger happy. But if you let these guys get behind you, you're screwed. Because you can't shoot to the left. Come that's pretty on, common. Really? But the part that's... They could have easily done that. Like, 
you know, just have him aim. <sighs> Come on, guys. Seriously, you can't program him to do that. You don't have to have him turn around, but just have him aim his gun the other way. Like, what the fuck? not fair is they sometimes sneak along the bottom of the screen so you oh, can't help but get in front of them even terrible. when you have a they straight shot so you can hardly hit them without getting hit yourself because they shoot in these downward angles so you get stuck in these impossible geometric patterns that's too bad they just keep coming it's too fast they just gang up on you and when you die it's game over no continues you really just one life again Fire! I feel bad for anyone who played this. Imagine the kids who got this from Toys R Us thinking, yay, the Rocketeer, only to get this poor, lousy, steaming pile of garbage. Let's take care of these games the right way. I got two rolling rocks, which I turned into the Rocket Beer. Let's strap these fuckers on and send them <laughs> off. Now, let's literally watch it go. Yeah. Now, one last thing about the shirt. I understand nobody actually wants me to literally go back to the old shirt. I just need a new one that everyone can unanimously approve of. So starting now, I'll be wearing a new shirt. Well, this is it. This is the new shirt. Uh... I hope you like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a odd looking shirt at the end. Are there really people who actually complain in the comment section about his shirt? To be honest, when I watch his videos, I never really noticed the difference. Like, I never really noticed it. I mean, then again, like, it's been a while since I watched any of the classic AVGN episodes from 2006 to 2011 or the second classic era of 2012 to 2016 or whatever, but um, I never really noticed the difference in his shirt. Like, I noticed the difference in his glasses. That's easy to, to tell the difference, but his shirt? I never really noticed the difference. I mean, the fact that people complain about something so minor like his shirt is just ridiculous. Nobody complains about the shirts I wear. I, 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 I don't always wear the same shirt in my React videos. <laughs> you know, if, if somebody complains about my shirt, I'll be like, dude, what do you expect me to do? Just have a bunch of the same shirt like Peter Griffin from Family Guy or, you, you know, Homer Simpson from The Simpsons or, you know, a bunch of different cartoon characters or just, you know, um, wear the same shirt every day and have to wash it literally every damn day. That just sounds ridiculous. Um... Anyways, I just want to point out that that's just a weird thing for people to complain about. What do you guys think about this episode of AVGN? I, I apologize for all the long pauses. I didn't mean to actually be rambling on as long as I did. <laughs> Definitely not. But what would you think about the episode as a whole? Did you guys like it? I think you did a good job. You know, I think you did a great job. It... It, it, it did remind me of classic AVGN ways. I like that he actually reviewed multiple games as opposed to just always doing just one game. It is the easiest thing to do is to, to review just one game as opposed to multiple games. But I liked it. It was cool. I, I, had, I had a fun time um, watching this review. It reminded me of some other reviews he's done in the past. It reminded me of some other... Uh, um, like games I played and it was really it was really fun I had a blast um that said thank you so much for watching please like comment and subscribe click that bell icon to add me notifications um I actually plan on doing tier lists in the future I just haven't made any the number one tier list I'm planning to do is actually Super Smash Bros related but I'm gonna do stuff that's YouTube related as well um among other things but uh there's a reason I brought that up, and later on when I have more time, you'll see why. 
Anyways, check out some of my other videos. I have uh, a nice big playlist of AVGN episodes. Now, I only started really doing these React videos since 2020. So all the AVGN episodes I have React videos to are just from last year, 2020, and this year, 2021. But nevertheless, I mean, he's still on. He still makes great, great videos. I mean, people are going to always remember the classic episodes from a decade ago as superior. But his new episodes are also pretty damn good. No, I haven't reacted to every episode that's come out last year, but most of them, yeah. I've even reacted to a, a You Know It's Bullshit episode and a random video about the last blockbuster in existence, um, which is in Bend, Oregon. Anyways, check out my playlist of uh, AVGN React videos if you want to see some more of that. Of course, check out Cinemassacre. They have amazing content. They've had amazing content for more than a decade, for a decade and a half now. Um, and uh, even if they've changed companies, going from Screw Attack to you know Game Trailers, Screen Wave now, um, it's always been good, you know. Um, and uh, also check out some of my original stuff. I mentioned that comedy compilation I made, which includes videos I uploaded back in, from 2009 all the way to 2020 as I uploaded that compilation in 2020, as well as um, checking out my Sonic movie review, which I uploaded on July 29th. I worked pretty hard on it. I hope to get some more views on that as well. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. See you later.